Hello friend, my name is Vijay Kumar and we are studying refrigeration and air conditioning. In the last video, we have seen about the cooling tower and some terms of cooling tower. Now in this video, we will see the evaporator. Actually condenser, evaporator and cooling tower, these all are the part or equipment of refrigeration system. Also expansion devices that we will see later. So let's see evaporator. What is evaporator? Evaporator is an important device used at low pressure site. It is used at low pressure site of refrigeration system. The liquid refrigerant enters into evaporator after expansion valve, where it boils and changes changes into vapor. So, you know this is the simple vapor compression cycle 4 to 1 is the process which is occurring in a evaporator. 3 to 4 the process which is occurring in an expansion wall. So, it is written that the liquid represent that is point number 3 the liquid represent will enter at point number 4 into evaporator. In evaporator, the refrigerant will boil and will change into vapor. So, what about what type of heat it will take? It will take latent heat. It will take latent heat. If I write here, latent. So, evaporator will take latent heat from the storage space. In order to maintain the low temperature and storage space of surrounding space. Okay. So the main function of evaporator is to absorb heat from surrounding space or storage space in order to maintain low temperature. So the represent will convert it to vapor from liquid to vapor. It will take latent heat. With the help of latent heat, it will change its space. And this is a storage space. One more thing you have to remember here. What is that? The evaporator is also a heat exchanger device. It is also a heat exchanger device. Like com condenser. It is like condenser. Like condenser, it is a heat exchanger device. That means in this Evaporator, there is an arrangement of coil, shell, there are different type of evaporators that we will see in the classification of evaporator. So, you have to remember that evaporator is also a heat exchanger because it is taking heat from the storage space and transferring that heat to the refrigerant. Okay, so now let's see the classification of evaporator. Let's see classification of evaporator. First, first type of evaporator is based on type of construction. That is bare tube coil evaporator. Then thin tube evaporator. After that plate evaporator. Then shell and tube evaporator. Shell and coil evaporator. Tube in tube evaporator. Second type based on how liquid represent is fed into the evaporator that is flooded evaporator and dry expansion evaporator third time based on mode of heat transfer that is natural convection evaporator and forced convection evaporator fourth time based on operating condition that is frosting evaporator no frosting evaporator then defrosting evaporator let's see one by one all the type of evaporator. Now let's see type 1 based on type of construction. You have to remember that based on type of construction, based on mode of heat transfer, they all are interlinked. Somewhere I will use the first term here. These all are interlinked. Okay. So first we will see bare tube coil evaporator. It is simplest type of evaporator. That is very simple. Easy to clean and defrost. 
have written here deep pore. That means easy. It is easy to close, clean and deep pore. It means it is a deep pore site in the operator also. Okay. Now less contact surface area. The bare tube coil evaporator has less contact surface area. It is something like that. This is suppose this is the coil. Like this. This will be the evaporator. From air, it liquid represents its flowing. And air vapor is coming down here. Vapor represents. You can easily see that it has less contact surface area because spacing are low. Okay. Now, if I want to increase the contact surface area, if I want to increase the contact surface area, why I want to increase the contact surface area so that maximum heat transfer can take place. So that maximum heat transfer from the evaporator can take place. Okay. So. What I will do, I I take a more length. That means I increase the length of this coil. I increase the length of this coil like this. I increase. So what will be the effect on the evaporator if I increase the length up to a from a certain level? First effect will be superheating. Superheating of represent. If I increase the length from a certain limit, then superheating of represent will take place. Because suppose I will increase the length up to this point like this, then represent will take heat at these points also or and or, or from these tubes also. So it will take extra heat. It will take extra heat because of that superheating will occur. Okay. Now, pressure drop. You know very well this is the equation for pressure drop. FLV square upon 2 GD. In third mechanics, you have studied this equation. If you increase the length, the pressure drop will increase. If you increase the length, pressure drop will increase. Simply. Now, if I increase the diameter, there is second option. If I decrease the diameter, decrease the diameter or increase the diameter, what, what will be the effect? If I decrease the diameter, then pressure drop will be more. Because pressure drop and diameter are inversely proportional. And if I decrease the diameter, what will be the effect? See here. If I decrease, sorry, increase the diameter, if I increase the diameter, for constant flow rate, for constant flow rate, if I increase the diameter, then velocity will reduce. Now, for if constant velocity, for constant velocity, if I increase the diameter, then volume flow rate will increase. Understood now? If I decrease the diameter for constant volume flow rate, then velocity will decrease. For constant velocity, if I increase the diameter, then volume flow rate will increase. Now, what will be the effect? In this case, that means more volume is flowing, more liquid represent is flowing into the evaporator, and more liquid will enter into the suction line, into the suction line, and suction line means it will enter into the compressor. Liquid will enter into the compressor. After entering the liquid in the compressor, it will damage the walls or end compressor also. Okay, so this is the bare tube coil evaporator. Let's see the next type of evaporator that is filled tube evaporator. This is simply the coil tube evaporator. The difference is only fins are provided. In this case, like fins are provided. Like this. These all are pins. Because of these pins, 
the contact surface area will be will increase contact surface area will increase if contact surface area will increase and heat transfer will increase so i written here things are provided to increase the contact surface area contact surface area as a result of that heat transfer will increase these evaporator wind tube evaporator used where refrigerator temperature is greater than 0 degree why it is because that if it is less than 0 degree then frosting will occur in evaporator frosting will occur ice will accumulate if ice will accumulate in the pins in between the pins frosting will occur Because of that, heat transfer will not take place. That's why these type of evaporators are used where the temperature requirement is greater than zero degree Celsius. I have written here to prevent the frosting and three mm spacing in pins. That means to prevent frosting, three mm spacing is provided between the pins. Now you see here. It is used where greater than zero degree Celsius temperature is required. That means, you see example like window AC, split AC. Whether this window AC and split AC works at zero degree Celsius? No, they will not work at zero degree Celsius. That means, the window AC and split AC are are of Pin tube evaporator. That means pin tube evaporator is used in window AC and split AC. And when talking about in refrigerator, in refrigerator where freezer is there, in refrigerator freezer is there, you keep a pot with water and that ice will it will become ice after some time. That means. The requirement for freezer is less than zero degree Celsius. So at that point, this is not used. This is not used. Okay. So this is the second type pin tube evaporator. Let's see plate plate type tube plate type tube evaporator. That is a plate type evaporator. Let's see plate type evaporator. In plate type evaporator, what is the difference between bare coil tube evaporator and plate type evaporator? Is the difference is only in this plate is welded with the evaporator. Plate is welded with the evaporator. This type of evaporator is used in household refrigerator. In refrigerator, you have seen there you keep your vegetables, water bottles. In that type of refrigerator. At the plate type evaporator is used. Okay, beverage coolers like beer. We have to cool. We have seen that Pepsi, Coca Cola. All these beverages, if I have to cool, all these beverages are used. All these beverages are cooled in a refrigerator, which is which is using the plate type evaporator. Okay, so beverage cooler also. The difference between this and pin tube only that in this plate is used. We have to remember this only. Now let's see the next type: shell and tube evaporator. Let's see shell and tube evaporator. The shell and tube evaporator construction is same like the shell and tube condenser. Like this is a shell and tube evaporator. In this, the liquid represent or vapor represent. That means represent is flowing in the tube. Represent is flowing into the tube. And in the shell, this is the shell. In this shell, what will happen? In this shell, the liquid which is to be cooled, that will flow. Okay, so like this. So in shell and tube evaporator, 
the liquid represents the vapor that is present will flow into the tube and the liquid which is to be cooled like water if i have to cool water then water will flow into the shells okay this is the shell and tube concept shell and tube evaporator it is used in like motor chiller used for refrigerating unit of 10 pr to 5000 pr nothing must to remember on in this only you have to remember the construction and working of shell and tube evaporator let's see shell and coil evaporator let's see shell and coil evaporator the shell and coil evaporator are used for less capacity refrigeration system like 2 to 10 pr refrigeration system shell and coil evaporators are used the shell and coil evaporator arrangement is like this in this case this is the shell and this one is the coil in coil the refrigerant will flow and in shell the the liquid which is to be cooled that will flow through the shell so water in to the shell and it will go out from the shell in tube liquid represent will flow these type of shell and coil evaporator used in water chiller system as a secondary refrigerant system secondary refrigerant this type of evaporator are used as a secondary refrigerant primary refrigerant and secondary refrigerant the primary refrigerant are used like in window ac and display ac the refrigerant is directly used to cool the storage space that is primary refrigerant in secondary refrigerant where there is a scarcity of primary refrigerant at that place is secondary refrigerants are used if that is there is a primary refrigerant and secondary refrigerant both the both refrigerants are used so in secondary refrigerant system the shell and coil evaporators are used tube in tube evaporator in tube in tube evaporator there are two tube one tube and second tube in this tube liquid to be cooled that will flow and outer outer tube liquid represent will this is a arrangement of counter flow that means both have opposite direction this is a counter flow arrangement there may be a parallel flow or flow arrangement in that case both will flow like this like this okay so this is a counter flow arrangement if this like this it is a parallel flow arrangement this type of evaporator are used in wine cooling and cooling of wine in the petroleum industry so friends now we have seen based on type of construction the classification of so friends we have seen the type of evaporator based on construction now let's see the another type of evaporator 